Hello friends, welcome back to Gems video. This time I am going to have a summary of my presentation at the National RSSDI 42nd Convention. This is primarily meant for doctors and those working along with the physicians as a diabetes team. And the subject is on insulin pumps in type 1 diabetes. This is a continuous glucose monitoring recorded from a patient with type 1 diabetes. The life of a subject with type 1 diabetes is very similar to a roller coaster ride with unexpected ups and lows severely impairing the quality of life. This solution, the time-tested solution, efficacious, proven to be safe and been there for more than 40 years now is insulin pump. And this is the modern day insulin pump. The pumps are very very small and insulin is stored inside the pump. Rapid acting analog insulin is the preferred insulin which is delivered via an infusion tube which is connected to the body via either a teflon or a steel needle. Historically this is the biostatter. Way back in 1970s this is a type 1 patient connected to the device providing insulin and glucagon both intravascularly and that was the most physiological way of treating diabetes. Unfortunately, biostatters were not portable and couldn't be tested in free living situations. But fortunately, in the year 1979, Pickup and Tamberlane both published the evidence of using insulin continuously, subcutaneously and that was a landmark discovery which later on led to the development of insulin pumps. We have traveled a long way from the bigger insulin pumps to smaller compatible user-friendly devices. Still majority of the physicians, majority of the doctors, probably all across the world are still unfamiliar with the functionality, with the benefits and with the utility of external insulin pumps. This is a cartoon. Here you have a person with diabetes on insulin pump who has sustained a couple of injuries and he is there at the emergency department for dressing his wound. The doctor is angry. The nurse is confused. The ignorance on the functionality of insulin pumps is transformed into anxiety which is expressed here as anchor. Throw that bloody equipment away or else I will not dress the rules. It happens all across. And that is why in the current insulin pump guidelines we have advocated those who are unfamiliar with the use of insulin pumps and when they have a patient in the emergency department or in the ICU or for surgery or after an accident remove the pump and be comfortable with an insulin regimen convenient and time tested comfortable for the treating emergency team but if the patient is conscious enough if he can manage with the insulin pump during the procedure of course if the physician and the team is comfortable they can still continue with the insulin pump and the patient can continue managing his diabetes. Yes, we need guidelines. This is a guideline 
for the India and for the developing world on the use of pumps in both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. It is available in the internet where we have discussed the options or the indications on the use of functions like the Borders Wizard, especially in type 1 diabetes, which will offer them a better quality of life with more and more evidence coming up. This is a new study, which is the largest study where there are 345 patients on insulin pump with type 1 diabetes compared with type 1 patients on insulin shots and they have gone through all the parameters and ultimately come up with a conclusion on the superiority of insulin pumps over the conventional insulin shots. This is the largest and the longest follow-up study ever conducted in type 1 diabetes. Recently, we published the challenges managing type 1 diabetes in Southeast Asia with authors from India and in Southeast Asia. We were discussing the prevailing challenges and the challenges are with availability of insulin. The challenges are with storing the insulin, the unavailability of refrigerators, the unavailability of even the insulins and the regimens compatible for treating type 1 diabetes. So we have in Southeast Asia prevailing challenges even for just treating type 1 diabetes. So do we require a dis even a discussion on insulin pumps? That's a big question. But we do have a minority of subjects who are eligible and affordable and who can be provided with the best treatment for diabetes and we are struggling so what is next next is artificial pancreas artificial pancreas is meant for treating type 1 diabetes it is a misnomer it is more to do with technology where we do have the insulin pump and we have the sensor and in addition to the insulin pump and the sensor we have the algorithm the mathematical algorithm which at present or probably for the last couple of years had been the biggest challenge in reaching the experimental exploration of artificial pancreas this is one example the concept of a model predictive control at a point of time, the future glucose values are predicted and the incident delivery strategy is mapped several steps ahead of time. And the insulin delivery is carried out. And after the insulin delivery is carried out, the situation is reassessed, which is very similar to that of a chess game where after the initial moves, the situation is again reassessed based on the opponent's response. And this is how an algorithm should function and should help modulate the delivery of insulin. But we have several physiological challenging situations which is precluding with the exploration of an acceptable algorithm. For example, the meals, menstruation, pregnancy, menarche, shift workers working for a couple of days during the night and then during the day, puberty. Meal is probably the major factor contributing to the glucose variability. The natural prompt postprandial challenges to the portal insulin glucagon ratio which determines the hepatic glucose input and output that ratio is absent in type 1 diabetes which results from the beta cell failure and from the alpha cell dysfunction and these meals will result in huge glucose excursions and since the last 15 years there have been tremendous technological advances tremendous advances in the making of this algorithm and now 
we have these lengthy animal experiments or preclinical studies replaced by a model by name in silico in silico stands for computer simulation similar to in vitro and in vivo studies now we have in silico studies this is one example of the artificial pancreas taxonomy or the design where here on the left hand you have the glucose input so you can input a glucose value or you can have a range and you have the glucose values coming from the different sensors and you have a controller here you have the model predictive control algorithm you have the fuzzy logic and then in addition to insulin it is a multi hormonal design where you have glucagon where you have prandentide and meal announcement here patient can have the input on the content of the meal and then there are a variety of sensors here in addition to the glucose sensor you can have physical activity sensors multiple sensors and the data processing unit so this is one clinical trial the result of which was published the portable glucose control system and why this example is being projected in the artificial pancreas clinical trials we need to have a powerful equipment a platform for holding all these algorithms replacing the conventional desktops we need to have a powerful platform for the cgm and these are the present day smart cell phones cell phones can carry all this and almost all these studies are being published where you highlight the time spent in normoglycemia the time spent in hypoglycemia the time spent in hyperglycemia also less but now the requirement is to go for lengthy clinical trials where you will have data more on the glucose excursions and you will have the data on the SVLC reduction at every three months etc etc and adding on to the value we have the insulin patch device which can be used along with even insulin injections which will have a controlled heating mechanism locally at the site of infusion or injection which will enhance the rapidity of absorption of the rapid acting insulin which truly is not that rapid acting with the available present day insulins we have several uh, differences in india comparing uh, the type 1 patients with type 2 diabetes patients using insulin pump we have majority of type 2 patients using insulin pump in india and china uh, in type 1 they are less affordable they need probably the real time continuous glucose monitoring and to probably resolve the current challenges we have the recent guidelines the consensus evidence based guidelines for the use of insulin pump therapy in the management of diabetes as per indian clinical practice published recently in japi where we have gone through the all the current guidelines the ace guidelines the uh, nice guide so we have uh, provided the data and we have discussed in a group and we have come out with a consensus guidelines where insulin pump probably should be mandatory in the management of type 1 diabetes we have all the pumps now available in india this is the vio insulin pump with a threshold suspend or a low glucose suspend mechanism uh, which is a hypoglycemia suspend whenever there is a low glucose and these are very commonly used and uh, it was in 2012 we initiated the vio pumps uh, in our clinic in trivandrum where there is a mechanism by which whenever the glucose is low the pump will shut down and after a period of 4 hours it will resuspend by itself and this is the emerging pump which has got a suspension mechanism for predicted hypoglycemia and that is the minimum 640g it has got a color display it has got an elegant design and this pump will shut down by itself even before the onset of a real hypoglycemia this is it to reach asia and let me move on to a cartoon and this has been a question this had been a question since 1970s 
and this is the question when am I going to have a fully automatic insulin pump and this is the answer this is the answer in 2014 with confidence the physicians can provide with this answer within another two to three years time and that is good news for type 1 diabetes subjects and this is the presentation from Jodhidev's Diabetes Research Centers in Kerala you may go through all our educational videos many of them are for the public and some of them are purely scientific presentations like this we are very thankful for all your responses and comments until next time bye bye from our GEMS video team in Kerala, India bye bye